All right, quick update on my shoulder post-surgical and the strength of the supraspinatus tendon at the moment and the external rotation range. Now, what I've been doing lately, I mean, we're eight, nine months post-op, right? So we've been smashing the external rotation. Now, interesting thing about my shoulder is the tendon that's been reattached is still weak and that's understandable. It's only been eight months. And remember, you don't start really rehabbing the tendon with bands or anything until 12 weeks. So for this thing, if you've been working on external rotation like that, if you don't analyze it properly, what you might be missing is a bit of a weakness through the back end there. Now, with my one, what tended to happen was I was missing about sort of 20 degrees of external rotation. Now, that's supraspinatus weakness going on there. Now, the other thing would do, scapula would be really hard as well, which would give you like a positive test in here, positive sort of supraspinatus test, oh, I feel it's weak. So there's direct supraspinatus weakness in there that can be masked by doing all these other exercises. So this month, what we're doing, and to help with thanks to Joe, is we're isolating down exactly the supraspinatus and external rotation strengthening to try and bring that back up to the strength of the rest of the shoulder. Because the internal rotation is fine, everything else is fine, pulling, pressing, scap, everything's great, apart from my external rotation and supraspinatus strength. Now, what I mean by that is, if I was going here, that's the sort of degrees I'm missing that bit. Now to get that bit, what my brain was doing is working on my delt and really overcompensating with my rear delt to try and get that movement there. Okay, so I wasn't noticing it too much until I isolated. The other thing that compensation did was give you heaps of trigger points through the back here. So what I was getting is pain and soreness in there and that would actually then even limit how much I could do. So you almost get to the point where you start getting a bit sore because you're compensating and then you get worse and worse and worse. And it feels like you're getting weaker even though you're strengthening. So what we did, instead of doing it in standing where my deltoid was working all the time, we need to take the deltoid out of the equation, okay? And we need to start doing some isometric work to try and beef up some strength there on the base and do some external rotation work without the deltoid. So here's the options. So what I did, was, and this is thanks to Joe, because he had a look at it, is work on my external rotation isometric strength lying down. So now what I'm doing for my supraspinatus and external rotation is putting a ball, like a Pilates ball like that, on the ground, in where I'm at, nine degrees out from the shoulder, and working on my external rotation strength there. Okay, so my deltoid's taken out of the equation, all I can focus now on is complete external rotation, isolated load, going that way, and just maxing that out to the point where I'm shaking and I, and I run out of steam. So this is gonna be a good 10 second, building to 20, building to 30 second holds at my sort of 90% limit, where I'm not completely overcompensating. And you can see there's a bit of a shake going on there with that, and that's where you know you're at your sort of limit. And that sort of work is building up the base. So there's gonna be sort of three sets of that daily. Now, in about maybe two or three weeks, we can bring the deltoid back in. We're still gonna work on some isometrics, gonna bring the deltoid back in. So what you'd simply do is do it in standing because the deltoid's gonna lift up the shoulder, okay? So in standing, when I do this sort of work here, because I'm standing, I've got gravity, I have to hold my arm up, that deltoid's working again, all right? So once you've got a little bit more strength, you can then go into standing where you won't compensate as much. Now the other thing I'm working on is instead of having a, say like a green band in standing doing external rotation, I'm going down to a yellow band, which is two stages down, and it's longer, but I'm doing it lying down, okay? So therefore what I do now is have that at a height, right? And then come into here, rest the arm. Again, I'm in 90 degrees here, all right? Rest the arm in that position, deltoids out of the equation, and then just work on my external rotation in that range. Now immediately, lying down, I've got more range there. One, the band's lighter, but I don't have to think as much with this one. I can just focus directly on external rotation range there. Now you can still see, can you see how I can't get that flat? All right? I can't get to zero degrees. Now that's not sort of range move from, that's power. I'm missing that power. Now, the trick is, and especially when we discussed this with Joe, is making sure I don't try and go and try and get there. Because if I try and get that last sort of 10, 20 degrees 
right now, I'm going to compensate. So I'm just working on the range I've got. Go to the point where I can't go any further, and then return. I might mix it up a bit, do a few sort of isometric holes there, a bit some more strength at that end range, and back. And over the weeks, when that will finally get down to the floor, when I gain enough strength, that'll eventually get to the floor without me having to overdo it. Once I get to that point, then, sure, I'll go back up to standing. Now, when I go into standing though, I'm gonna try and take away some of the deltoid issue by putting a big heavy weight there, putting this one around there. So that heavy weight means that's just not gonna move. So instead of having the band coming this way, I'm gonna have it directly on the ground so I'm getting a bit more external rotation. I'll just bring this over here a bit. And so then, you can stand here. Now, at this point here, put the arm into that position there, and then go back and try and find the wall that way. But there's no point in me doing this, because I'm just gonna compensate with the deltoid until I get the floor one done. Now, ideally, at this position here, you have a little arm rest, okay? So I can rest the arm on something. Now, that might be a weight rack or a squat rack or something, or a bar that comes out. So I can rest my arm down on something, and then I don't have to use my deltoid to hold my arm up. Best scenario for me is to lean back on that, and then I don't have to hold up as much and work on that. And eventually, once I get that arm to 90 degrees, then I know my strength is up, then it's about increasing the bands. And at that point, my shoulder, supraspinatus, and external rotation strength will be up even and matching the rest of the shoulder, and then I progress forward again. So that's it for this week. I'll show you when I've increased that strength, and I'll also show you how we test it digitally to see that progress. See you next time.